Hi everybody. I'm sorry that there's been a little bit of a delay in the output of my videos. You may or may not know that I have chronic neurological Lyme disease. So there are times when I have a flare and I just need to take a step back and kind of nurture and take care of my body for a bit. So the past two months, that's what I've been doing. And I actually will be doing a related channel just all about um, chronic illness, Lyme disease, invisible disability, how to kind of survive with those things. So keep an eye out for that. But that's not what we're talking about today. Today, I wanted to talk to you about what I like to call the cult of the tortured artist. And what I mean by that is that in all of the art genres, performing, acting, uh, dancing, painting, writing, all of them, uh, there persist some very negative viewpoints on the sort of lifestyle or the sort of habits that one needs to foster in order to um, bring out your most creative side. And what I actually find is that most of those habits are destructive and most of those habits are covering a fear. Um, a lot of people are really afraid of showing their true vulnerability or they're afraid that if they don't have these crutches of, you know, um, unhealthy relationships or staying up all night and not taking care of oneself or addictions, they're afraid that without those things, they can't put out good work. And they hold idols up who are the exception of people who are able to become successful despite all these really horrible habits. And you're probably thinking to yourself, back of all, you know, your idols and the legends that you know and how many of them were horrible addicts or died at an early age. And that's true. You can think of so many. There's Marilyn Monroe, there's Elvis, uh, Kurt Cobain, um, Van Gogh. There's so many that you can think of to say, well, Tabitha, this person did it and Amy Winehouse did it and she was a huge success. Yes, that is true. But let's take a minute and think about the lives of those actual legends. Um, Marilyn Monroe, she was miserable. She did not enjoy her fame. Amy Winehouse was really lost in the throes of addiction and she died young and she didn't get to enjoy her fame. So while I know so many people who actually look up to that ideal, not just do they look up to the person, but they actually look up to the ideal of, oh, I wanna be this kind of flaming star that burns bright and then dies out really quickly. You know, people who look up to, you know, Jimi Hendrix and Kurt Cobain and all these other musicians who kind of died around the same age range and wanted to do that and they don't think about how actually sick that is. And I'm not trying to put you down or hurt feelings if that's you, but I just really want you to take a look at that. Um, I think anybody who is working in an art field, such as myself, I used to be an actress before my health got too bad, and now I'm uh, working on a novel. Um, I know that most of us want to achieve a certain level of success. And I know that fame is often looked at as a dirty word, but let's be honest, there are some people who really don't want fame, but most people who are pursuing an art career or a performance career want a certain level of fame. And that's okay. I know, I know most people won't say that, but it's okay to want the fame, as long as you have a love and a passion for your craft. You can want both. So, you want the fame and that's okay. Or maybe you don't want the fame. You just want to make something that speaks to people because that's the point of art is it kind of brings us together. It can reach someone who has nothing in common with you except for they're going through something rough in their life. And your artwork, if it were to reach them, could either show them that they're not alone or it could lift them up and give them a break from that hard reality into something more joyful or funny. And so maybe you want the fame or maybe you just want to touch people with your art. So if you're someone who's 
you know, relying on addiction, who's only fostering unhealthy relationships, who, um, let's say you kind of break through those things and actually achieve that success, are you actually going to be able to enjoy that success or enjoy the connection that you're making with your audience if you're so lost in unhealthy habits? I'm pretty sure the answer to that is no. So, there's another option. It's not just one or the other, shocker. Uh, you can create amazing art that is so honest, that touches people, that brings them joy or brings them comfort or brings them, you know, the you're not alone when they most need it and be living a healthy, happy life. Who would have thought? There are just as many examples of people who are successful, who are legends in their own right, but who are healthy, happy, um, you know, artists. Now, of course, nobody's perfect. You could look at anyone's life and pinpoint, well, this happened or they do this. Nobody is perfect, but there is a difference between being lost in addiction and fostering only unhealthy relationships as opposed to living a, a life where you are, you know, seeking the best for yourself. Um, you know, a perfect example is Charlize Theron or, um, let's see, uh, Meryl Streep. Uh, a ton of other people or people who had been living the unhealthy life but now really work, work hard to foster a healthy one such as Robert Downey Jr., um, Chris Martin, so many other examples and I'm sure you guys can think of so many and tell me more or leave it in the comments of people who are the example of legends, successes, people who are amazing, who are creating amazing work but aren't living those negative kind of uh, aspects that sometimes people look up to. So you can have both. You can have it all. You can live a healthy, long life while being successful, while creating amazing work. You can create relationships where you're supporting the people that you love instead of bringing them down. So now that we know that it's possible, you may be asking how? Well, there are several different ways that I would recommend. Um, and the top three are hypnosis, conventional therapy, and meditation. So uh, meditation, I think, is, whereas hypnosis is like going in to a surgery where there's like something purposeful that's going to be fixed and it's very targeted, like a laser, uh, meditation is kind of the all-purpose, like eat an apple a day keeps the doctor away. One small meditation a day keeps the crazy away. So meditation is just really a healthy practice of just taking a moment to be in silence and that will cut through so much neuroticism and anxiety, so much of the need for reliance on negative habits. So that's one thing I really recommend. Now we go on to conventional therapy. Conventional therapy, I always recommend to people. It's very healthy. Even if you are the sanest person in the world, I still think it's awesome to have someone you can go to once a week where it's just about you. Because with your friends and your loved ones, it's always, you know, a give and a take. But sometimes it's nice to have it just be all about you and get out whatever, whatever is stressing you, talk through some problems. So conventional therapy is also amazing to kind of get a healthier uh, lifestyle and free your inner artist a bit. However, the number one thing that I think is really, really useful for it is hypnosis. Now, to become a better actor or a singer or an artist, you do usually need to train unless you, you know, just are born a Whitney Houston. But generally, you do need to train and obviously I'm not taking away from craft at all. But this is more about uh, your mental well-being, uh, your life in general. And I truly believe that if you're a happier, healthier person, you're going to create better work. I'm gonna do a whole separate video about all the ways that hypnosis can help you be a better performer or artist. 
and um, I think you'll find it pretty interesting. So you should check it out after this. It kind of, I don't want to go too much into it because that's going to be the next video part, but it's very targeted in releasing things that hold you back because if you have something that's holding you back in your life, say anxiety, it's likely that that's gonna hold you back in your craft as well. So no matter how much training you do, it's not necessarily gonna free you from that anxiety. And so hypnosis is kind of a very quick way. That's where it's different from regular uh, therapy is that regular therapy kind of takes uh, months upon months and even sometimes years to get that effect you're looking for whereas hypnosis in just a handful of sessions can really get you some huge effects so I hope that I kind of explained that well I know it's a hard topic for me since I've done so many videos and I really have struggled with getting it all out in a cohesive manner but I'm hoping that I have done it this time and you can understand that um, Becoming successful in an art field is one of the hardest things to do and out of any career. Becoming successful in the arts is the most difficult. So already, not to be like a downer, but already the chances of becoming wildly successful in an art-based field are slim. Add into that negative habits while you're thinking that these are the things that will help you create your best work and be that legend, that idol, that James Dean, um, actually, your chances of being successful are already so low. Add into that negative habits that maybe make you not the most uh, best person to work with or you know, not really being able to get past the things that are holding you back in your life and you're making your chances even smaller. So I hope I helped you to see that those aren't your only options, that you can have it all, really, and your chances of being successful are going to be greater if you really are a person who is just so like good with yourself that you're putting out really amazing art. Whether or not you're in a dark place, you're able to tap into your imagination and still create amazing art and you're the sort of person that people want to be around because you're not a hot mess so um i hope you liked the video really i would love some comments let me know your feedback let me know what you thought if you have anything else you would like to hear on the subject subscribe for more interesting videos on hypnosis meditation the arts all of those good things and look out for the next video that's more specific on how hypnosis can help you to be a better artist or a performer. So bye for now.